Hey everyone, and welcome back to Pixel Junkies Podcast, episode 131. 132. Thir- two. Hello everybody. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Adam. Did your thing say record over there? I completely forget. Uh, I can't see it. Is it red? I can't see it. You can't see it. Alright, yeah. we've got a good start here. Oh man, seamless. Great, uh, great good thing going. Alright, how you doing, Adam? Good, how are you? Good, I'm doing great. What are we, we're, we're we're playing F one, aren't we? Uh, definitely, oh, definitely F one. That joke never week. gets old. Yeah, the old, old faithful. I call her. Old faithful indeed. That always sounds like a porn star joke or something. An old faithful. Yeah, because you know, like what women the, spewing out lots of liquid. Oh, I thought I thought it would refer to a man's penis. Oh, interesting. Not 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 woman's sploosh. Yeah. Is there a technical term for that, or is it uh, just like, or is woman's sploosh the closest we get? No, it's called Splooge, isn't it? Is that what it's called? I think so. I think God, we I found the name wrong. of the podcast. It's called Splooge, isn't it? <laughs> Splooge, question mark? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All right, so we're playing this because the Covenant or the Borg or whatever are attacking. Get them get out while you can, Adam, because it's happening. Oh, man. It's happening. It's a, uh, Maybe we'll discover something new in this podcast. We'll be maybe. the first ones. That'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? There's a big uh, orange thing off to your off to your left. Uh, that's the core of the galaxy, Adam. Oh, okay. It's very it far away right now for some reason. But there you go. So 2.4 came out this week. Uh, we've been talking about it a little bit in uh, previous weeks and months and years, or I have at least. And uh, this is a big update for a lot of elite players. Me, espe- well, maybe not me especially, but of the group, obviously me, because it's been. Uh, Something that's been talked about and for a very long time was just a, a concept because pretty well as you know, as soon as I got into Elite, the the topic of the Thargoids and what the Thargoids were was like ever present. It's like, oh, where are the Thargoids? What are the Thargoids doing? Where are they hiding? What do they do? What do they look like? Why why do they exist at all? And it's like it's been talked about so long now that it's almost like Mythical. So the fact that they've finally added Thargoids to the game. It was a can... long burn, though, to get to there. Long, slow burn. Yeah, yeah. Literally, I mean, for some people, it's been much longer than than mine because I kind of waited to get into Elite a little bit because uh, I wasn't. I was a little bit hesitant at first, um, but then obviously I got into it, and it's pretty well all I've played for the last two and a half years. But uh, definitely a slow burn to get there. I can't tell you the, the amount of times that I've been writing something on the computer, and all of a sudden I'll see. Mil- was it Milwaukee MLK or whatever? What is your thing? ML ML one? Oh, on uh, on Steam. Steam. Yeah, Milwaukee. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Milwaukee is playing Elite Dangerous. All right, well, the Thargoids are uh, cutting right to it. At oh, this is podcast. that what is this what happened? Uh, yep. This is uncommon. Is this? Oh, is it quite common? It's it. Well, it's uncommon now, but this is essentially the. Um, oh, here it comes. Oh, are you gonna die? No. He's going to shut my ship off, though. So, this happened before. If you watched some of our previous podcasts where we went Thargoid hunting, this happened to us before. It's kind of different now. They've added a couple of tweaks, like the Thargoids actually do like an EMP pulse to shut your ship off, rather than not knowing what they did. So, I can't do anything at the moment because my ship's turned off. But, I can still interact with this thing once my ship turn, turns back on. I could shoot it if I wanted to. Which would be a mistake because these things are not easy fights. I uh, can you get close to it without it killing you? Uh, some of them you can. They they very they very much vary. Uh, like if I get it seems close fast. to it, holy shit! Yeah, they are very fast. I'm probably not even gonna get close enough to it for me to piss it off. I could start shooting at it right now, but that we'll save that for a little bit later in the podcast. Yeah, I'm assuming that would just annihilate your ship, would it? Uh, yeah, oh, really what this feels like, you know, well, I was expecting them, was that? I said, well, there it goes. Yeah. That orange. Disappeared that, into. That green rose in the sky or whatever it is. Yeah, disappeared into some ether, and I can't scan it because I don't have a wake scanner. But, uh. What are you in? The Corvette. Okay, so you're in your upgun military ship. Yeah, I mean, this is, this ship can quite easily take out multiple of the most difficult NPC ships in the game. Um, you know, that being other Corvettes or Anacondas, Cutters, anything. 
It's really, it's kind of made the game incredibly easy against like pirates or bounty hunters or whatever. Uh, I don't really do a whole lot of PvP because that gets into meta stuff and I really don't care for like grinding out meta builds and all that kind of crap. If you like PvP then go for it, it's not my thing. Um, but these things, I was expecting them to be difficult. I wasn't expecting them to be this difficult, at least right now. Uh, for the first couple days that they added them on Tuesday, uh, or I guess it was Wednesday, yeah, Tuesday is when the update came out. Um, up to that point, you could fight the Thargoids, but you couldn't, it didn't seem like you were doing any damage to them. Um, because we didn't actually have any scan data on them, so we couldn't actually, like, see their ship on our heads-up display. Um, we couldn't see their health, we didn't know how their structure worked, so we really didn't know what we were doing, if anything, to them. Uh, and then the previous week, they introduced a community goal event to engineer, uh weapons basically from things that we've uh, discovered months and months past to basically make weapons that we could at least fight back against the Thargoids and those were released uh, Wednesday night when they did the the server reboot they do that every Wednesday night and so then Thursday morning people were out shooting shit out of Thargoids and uh, they can now be killed and I've killed one myself with a group of other people they're not easy fights. They're definitely, as of as of right now, they're absolutely uh, designed to be like a four-man, four-person fight. Uh, they're like a they're like a boss. They're a boss fight, and it's kind of cool because after playing that dynamic and learning, oh man, Cybertron, yeah, uh, and after learning how to like fight these things and how their biology works, uh, it's it's really cool to. To fight something new, it's like it almost feels like new endgame content, because it's not really something you could do at the beginning. I suppose you could. You could. Um, people have been using a lot of smaller, faster ships because they're cheaper, and obviously they're more nimble, so you can get around these Thargoids. You've seen already that they move incredibly fast. For uh, such a big ship, too, because that thing was massive. Like massive compared in there, to you. Oh, there's a Thargoid in here too. Is that uh, is that an Imperial? I forget what they're called, I Interdictor or whatever? Yeah, Majestic Class Interdictor. This one has been disabled by Thargoids. And, it, uh, it looks like the, the rest of the Imperial fleet there. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple. I was here... Imagine that whole battle group being taken out by that one ship, which looks tiny in comparison. Oh, shit, there's a th there's two Thargoids Oh, God. Is he attacking you? Uh, nope. I startled the shit out of me, though, because I didn't know he was there. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Thargoid. They have a really cool design, it must be said, for, like, as most most ships in sci-fi, they look like that Imperial uh, Majestic no, class, not, or like the Farragut class. Me. What? Not happy with me being here. Uh, or, you know, whatever, or or they look like the Enterprise, or the, or the Imperial Ones, or whatever. But, um, they got a really unique biological design. I really like it. It's not something I've ever really seen in, uh, in... In much science fiction before, you hear it, you see it more in books, but you don't really get a good visual representation of them in books, you know? So, are those like missiles, or...? Well, these, the tiny things? Yeah. They're Thargons, which I guess are like little drones. They will, after a while, I guess maybe when they're depleted of energy, use themselves as missiles. But... but did, can they shoot? They can also shoot, as well. So, oh. they're... They, they almost do as much damage, if not more, than the main ship, which is the Interceptor, uh, of this particular These variant. These things seem very powerful. And they seem very nimble. Uh, yeah. Um, For such a big ship. Yeah, incredibly nimble. It's... Like, it's look kinda, at that. Yeah, they just spin around. They'll spin around very, very fast. Like, a, a tactic to fight NPCs in the game is to ram them. You can take down their hull and their shields with this. You can do damage to these guys this way as well, but good luck hitting them because they they move out of the way very quickly. Uh, so this is an Imperial battle group just gone, I'm guessing, that they've just annihilated it. Yeah, and, and I, you know, it it it's difficult to know what they're... It seems like they're looking for something. And if you're carrying... Well, they're always scanning stuff, aren't they? Yeah, it, it's, it seems very much like... You know, they're like a one-track hive mind, you know? They're do they're doing something very specific for a very specific reason. They're not just here to terrorize humans. It's almost like we're in the way, you know? Like, yeah. oh, we have their technology or something to that effect. 
and they want it back or the animation <clears> on that is amazingly fluid of them like of the little things going into the big ship yeah that's awesome like if you have uh oh, yeah, there so it he's, goes he's, oh here we go yeah, one of them's leaving so you can see on this list they have four hearts. You need to destroy all of those to to kill the thing. Because it's a bioorganic ship, isn't it? Uh, yeah. It seems like it's not piloted. It seems like it it is it the is thing. the thing. Um, Maybe it's part of a larger whole. Like like they're only like the scout ships of an even bigger mothership. Uh, and yeah, I mean, based on a couple of things that have happened, even just in the past day, that seems like a like uh, like a possible theory. And we'll go visit some of that stuff. In this podcast, that hopefully. Seem, by the way, that this would be a good opportune time to get up some to get some kills on these things. Uh, what to kill Thargoids? No, to kill to kill the Imperial fleet. Oh, oh yeah. It, it's and it seems odd too because just like hover down right in front of the bridge, so your nose is like right in front <laughs> of the bridge. Just flip them the double bird, then take off. Like you can see the. Oh, we're on camera. Oh, there's a. Uh, there's uh, Jennifer Lawrence, character? as Adam says. What? Jennifer he, Lawrence. Yeah. Uh, you see, yeah, you can see like the damage. Always the thing wear rubber behind. kids. <laughs> it's almost got like a hexagon pattern in it as well. Y yeah. Is that is that so. what damage from their weapons? See, it would seem like yeah, it seems like the type of damage that they leave behind. It looks fractal almost. Um, and yeah, so. When they do fight you, your shields make almost no difference. Their their missiles and their projectiles seem to bleed right through your shields and do. They're almost like the Borg in a way, because that's that's what happened to the Borg when when the Enterprise first encountered the Borg in in Star Trek in season two, I believe it was, and then much and then to a much greater extent in season three, they were like shields up, and then like immediately the Borg would just like they're they're they'd be like, oh, we're still getting hit. Shields do nothing. Shields do nothing. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, then they. Then they die, and they'd be like, firing torpedoes, no effect. Oh, thanks, Worf, you've been a big help. Yeah, and that, that seems to be the case. There's been some posts on, like, Reddit and stuff saying, you know, the Thargoids are board confirmed. Um, and, yeah, they also... What are uh, these, once, anyway? Uh, these are a bunch of clippers and cutters that have been destroyed. Disabled by uh, caustic damage, which is something that they tend to do once... The Thargoids get really hurt. Like, they, they almost keep, like, an ace up their sleeve until you really piss them off. And then they just start melting your hull, and it, that just, your damage just keeps going down and down and down. So this is like an acid attack, almost? Uh, yeah, it seems like. <clears throat> and when we killed one yesterday, um, when it exploded, it like, the explosion, which looked like the Death Star exploding, um, it just, like, blasted everybody's ship with some sort of caustic substance that took my hull at the time, which was 99. I had gone back to a station to repair and rearm because didn't have enough missiles to take it out. Oh, so it was like a running gun thing. Uh, yeah, and um, I, I was at like 50, 52% hull when I made it back to the station, which took me like two minutes. So like it went down that much that fast. I do like the idea of like a running gun battle throughout a star system between like four players and this thing where like over the course of like two days of hit and run tactics you eventually kill this yeah. this thing. How awesome would that be? I mean that's not that's not far from it. I think the first the first woman that was killed took two hours. And that was like uh, people taking turns at like holding the thing off, like keeping your ship alive long enough so that people could go get ammo and come back and then you could swap out. Couldn't couldn't just like a team of like six people in in a in a Corvette like you got like the super up gun ship just go or like uh, eight or ten like a like a huge yeah you could fleet. I mean you, the, the maximum wing size right now is four people um, you can obviously have more people in an instance than four so just but, like three wings of four yeah you, I mean you could do that it'd be difficult to orchestrate getting everybody into that instance but it is definitely possible. Um, I imagine there's a lot of clans out there who are considering doing that. Yeah, though. people people have uh, the couple of the the group that I was doing it with were planning to do it with two wings, but the other wing kind of fell apart, so we ended up doing it just with one wing. Um, but two wings were definitely would have made it possible. Anyway, we can get out of here now. You should, did you name yourself like Goldwing, and were you Porkins? Uh, we didn't really do code names. No. I guess we could have. Was I Porkins? <laughs> I or, been... or were you the guy in, in episode 6 who goes like, Intensify forward firepower! Ah, <laughs> too late! It's going to be J-Law or whatever. There you go, there you go. 
Oh, camera's out of focus. There's my thing. Turn that blur away down there. You know. There you go. They also added jackets to the game. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Now and, you look all nifty. And glasses. Yeah. So, so uh, I wonder, like, I wonder what the big ships look like. Oh, let me pop into this. I mean, I would totally expect there to be bigger ships than what we've seen. Um, obviously we haven't seen them yet, but you know, maybe like Dark Star level. Like I've heard some theories. Dark on Star. It. Yeah, what isn't or, or like what are those things from like is it Star Trek they're in or Battle Battle Star or something like that? What are those things? What what or you is mean that base the, stars? Base stars. There you go. What what is that from? Battlestar Galactica. There you go. Okay. Yeah, something like something to that effect. They were pretty big. Yeah. But the thing is, it's not it's not being because this is a thing that I don't think like Warhammer 40k really gets. Oh man, you could look so cool. They can be a, you can be an 80s cop nerd. Yeah, or an 80s cop. Yeah, or an 80s cop. Um, is where like it's it's not about the size of the threat; it's the size of the threat in context with the universe. So, for example, a cat isn't a very isn't a big threat, but to a group of mice, a cat is an astronomical threat. So, and that's the problem with 40k, where like like one of the main villain of 40k, arguably the main villain, is this guy called Abaddon the Despoiler, who is like a 13 foot tall demon encrusted dude in a set of black armor with more spikes on it than 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 a fucking railroad and he's 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 in this black armor with claws and skulls and he has a fleet of ships um and like he has a hundred thousand million ships under his command and they're all crewed by demons and these these evil space marines which are like the, the Spartans from Halo except turned up to 11 and evil and they rate people and like giant spaceships like the size of the Executor and then he has three or four or however long of these uh, uh, Black Star or Dark Heart or whatever they're called, space stations, which are like the Death Star. He has four Death Stars, and then his ship is like a super Death Star. And all of this is against the main guys. I'm like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> How much does this guy need? <laughs> uh, He's like four Death Stars and a super Death Star, and then a fleet of 100,000 ships, and then like 20 billion troops or whatever it is. And it's like, yet he still can't get past, because like the way he, he lives in, in hell... Kind of. And um, outside of hell, there's a planet called uh, Cadia, and Cadia is like the gate of hell, and hell can't get past Cadia because of some magic bullshit science thing on Cadia. So they gotta get past Cadia first, and he's tried 13 times, and only on the last time was he able to have any success. Every The 12 times before that, he had no success getting past Cadia. Like, he was, he kept failing right off the gate. like, you have, like, the like the resources of hell to get past this plus death stars and you can't get past this planet. Yeah. Useless, <laughs> useless villain. Uh, there were some. Yeah. There were some theories that uh, one interesting one that I read earlier today was that like because Raxla is pretty mythical in in elite lore and. Uh, it's just sort of like this holy grail planet somewhere in the galaxy that has alien treasures and is said to be like a gateway to another galaxy or alternate universes or something to that effect. Isn't a bunch of like, isn't there like a clan of people who are trying to find it, like in universe? Like, a uh, yeah, yeah. There's like the Dark Wheel is a is a faction that supposedly has ties to Raxla. But one of the theories that I read cool name was, too, Raxla. Was that? I like the name Raxla. Oh yeah. Well, one of the theories was that. Um, Raxla is actually the Thargoid Queen, and the planet itself is alive. Oh, that's which is like that. That's a cool idea, right? Kind of like Ego, uh, Ego from Guardians of the yeah. Galaxy, too. Maybe, Except, maybe less like, you know, magical, but yeah, probably also not played by. Oh uh, uh, yeah, uh, what's his name? Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. There we go. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I thought that was cool. I mean, maybe that's the way it is. Maybe maybe it's not, but. I think that'd be pretty interesting. That's one of the things I like about like games like this, where like there's a lot of different theories, and none of them are necessarily wrong yet. If that makes sense, like that's yeah. that's one of the reasons why. And this is a segueing into this topic. Why I kind of like a lot of uh, some of the reasons I really like Destiny, is because Destiny there's I think 13 or so major theories about what the darkness is, and you never really get an answer to what Jackie it is. Jackie Estacado. What? Jackie Estacado. Go on. Obscure references, what that is. Not everyone's that, gonna not get that. that. Obscure. 
Um, anyway, uh, so, like, there's some people who think, like, the darkness is a fleet of alien ships. There's some people who think that the darkness is literally evil personified. There's some people who think the darkness is all the species the Traveler has left behind coming for revenge. There's some people who think that the darkness is, like, a super advanced AI, um... Like, just, there's some people who think that the darkness is just, like, a galactic storm. Like, a, a storm of unimaginable power that no star system could possibly stand up against. And it's, it's like, interesting stuff like that, where it's like, it could be some, all of those things, or it could be none of those things, or it could be all of them, or some combination thereof. It's really interesting. Look a shame. So, I, uh, I actually just finished Destiny 2 the other day. Uh, and I've played through most of the endgame content that I have access to on my, uh, as a solo player. And uh, I'd like to give my thoughts on that if I could. Yep, talk about Destiny. Adam. So, well, we just spent like half an hour talking about your thing. I wasn't complaining. All right. Uh, so, pretty much... Uh, you talked about it last week, now you've finished it? Yes. Okay. So I just you want to kind of give my complete thoughts, because I have a pretty good understanding of what the game is. Full bowl of Destiny right there. And this is Destiny 2, obviously. Um, it's pretty good. There's some things that this game does much better than the first one, and yet there are other things that the game doesn't do nearly as well, and I don't understand. It, it's like they took two steps forward, one step back, and I don't understand the reason for the step back. It, I, I, I really don't. So I guess I'll talk about the good points first. Um, this is one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard in a video game. This is up there with, like, Halo or, like... Um, Oh man, there's a Farragut. Uh, it just pops in, you know. Yeah. Or uh, what's like, like transistor, um, you know, any of the Legend of Zelda so who, games. Do you know who did the soundtrack? Yeah, it's uh, Michael Salva Michael Salvatore. No. Oh, I haven't. I. So is it just like in house or? Uh, so is the guy who used to work on he he was a good friend of Martin O'Donnell and then he Marty O'Donnell left Bungie and then this guy kind of did the soundtrack for this one. Uh, Michael Gaccino. Yeah, I think that's his name. Is it? I mean, no, uh, it is uh, Michael Michael Salvatore. Oh, okay. Yeah. It is Michael Salvatore. He did a fantastic job with this. Like, there's there's songs in this that are absolutely breathtaking. The plot of the game, I'm sure you've seen, is um, the Red Legion, which is an elite faction of Cabal, invades Earth and seals away the Traveler's Light and leaves you powerless. So the whole game is about you powering up and gathering the forces necessary to push the to attack the Cabal, the Cabal Red Legion, and to kill their leader Dominus Gaul and regain your light. And that is where the game is most effective, is in the first few, is in the first hour or so of the game, where you fight through the Cabal, and you're literally just, like, slaughtering through these these elite soldiers, and then you get to Dominus Gaul, and in an instant, you've been depowered. And one thing I would have liked to see the game do is have you fight Dominus as, like, a powered-up guardian, and have him you do a little bit of damage, and then you get depowered, and then you absolutely get spanked by him, and then he just shoves you off of his ship. And then the next couple of levels are just you without any power. So you got no super jump, you have no grenades, you have no powers or anything. You have no super melee. Just fighting, trying to gain your, your power back. And you feel pretty helpless because you realize, you you know, you can't... There's no resurrection, you don't heal as quickly. You can't flop around the map anymore. It feels... You feel not completely helpless, but you definitely feel more helpless. And that was a really interesting aspect of the game for me. But the problem is they give you back all of your powers way too soon. I would have preferred if they locked out, like, so, like, you gain, you do gain your powers back. Spoiler alert. Uh, I will try to avoid spoilers as much as I can. Um, but you, you gain your powers back, and it kind of happens all at once. And I would prefer, if pretty early on, and then there's, you, you don't get your subclasses, those unlock later, but in your main class, you get a lot of your powers early on. And I would have liked to have had it, you have to quest for those powers. So you start off with, you just get your grenade back or you just get your super jump ability back and that's it. And then you have to do another couple of quests to get your next thing. I think that would have been more effective than a traditional leveling system like what we got. Um, it would have, could have tied into the story a bit better. Mm. The story is pretty, is, it's not like, it's not going to blow you away in terms of its, you know, of, in terms of what it is. It's not like a, it's not like a, I don't know, like a Halo 2, well for example. 
It is well written. It's a very good story, but it's not fantastic. You, you're never like in. It's not like Bioshock Infinite, where even years later, I'm still talking about how good the story in Bioshock Infinite was. It's just a good story. It's like, you know, Halo Three. How Halo Three was just a good story. Nothing special. Nothing bad yeah. about it. It's like that. Where it's just, this is fine. This is what the first game should have been, and I'm glad we got it in this one. It's just about you regaining your powers. However, I would have liked more. Uh, of a threat presence from the from the Red Legion because after the first you know once you get out of the city and you start regaining your powers they kind of fuck off for a bit and they don't really come back till near the end of the of the main story and that's a problem because I kind of forgot about them as a threat like you'd run into them occasionally like in the world as just like random groups of enemies but yeah. you never like they should have had like they should have been hounding you the whole way like you're on Titan for example and then all of a sudden like a huge fleet of ships come in you're like you gotta go you gotta get off Titan they're coming for you and you like you jet away uh. and they do explain it in the story but very poorly so mm. it's really I would have preferred if they hounded you the whole game that would have been uh, that would have led to a much ec uh, a better story um, the voice acting in this game is excellent uh, a lot of really great characters especially um, Nathan Fillion as Clade Six. Yeah, I heard he's like a much needed comedic relief. He almost. is. Uh and uh um forget their names, the guys who voice um Savala and um um uh, God what's her name? Uh Iora. Uh are uh, they also do a good job. I mean like Nolan North and It's not Nolan North. Oh. It's definitely not Nolan North. Oh, I don't know. Uh I don't know. Ashley Birch. Laura Bailey, any of those, any of them in it? Uh, they might be. I haven't seen it. Liam O'Brien's probably in it. Uh, he he is actually most of the Critical Role crew crew is in that. Um, okay. they're um. Seems like Liam O'Brien's in everything, even if he just says one thing. Yeah, I think I think Liam. No, sorry, they're in. They're uh, the the Critical Role crew is in mostly in Shadow of War. Although I imagine like Sam Regal and and whatever yeah, are definitely like, like. That's like the Critical Role game. Yeah. Just about. Laura Bailey's your wife. Travis Willingham is like one of your quest givers, and Matthew Mercer reads all the fucking or a lot of the entries that you pick up. Yeah. So, uh... Liam O'Brien does Gollum. And not, I don't know if Sam Regal's in it or not. Who does, who does Gollum? Liam O'Brien. Really? Hmm. You wouldn't, you wouldn't say, right? No. Uh, but it's just one of Liam's ridiculous voices. So, Lance Reddick is Commander Savala, and Gina Torres is Ikora. Right. Ikora I knew Lance Reddick. Reddick was in it. Yeah, Lance Reddick is, uh, he, you might know him from, um... Probably know him best from... Horizon Zero Dawn. Well, either that John or, Wick. What? John Wick. Yes, I was, or or um, if you ever saw it, um, why can't I remember the name? Fringe? It's the show that Roy, yeah, Fringe. That, that's the show that Roy keeps going on about. And of course, uh, Gina Torres is, is um, uh, the, played um, the second in command in Firefly, who I also cannot remember at this moment. I'm having a really big brain fart at the moment. Second in command. Oh, uh, yes, I don't remember her name. And she's also in Suits. Um, God, what is her name? Don't remember her name. She does a lot of stuff, though. Yeah, I mean, Nolan North is nice in voice. this. Yeah, well, Zoe is he still your ghost? Or Zoe. Yeah, Nolan North is your ghost, well, which is much Zoe. better than uh, friggin' Peter Dinklage, who didn't give a fuck for that whole performance. I thought he was okay. No, he wasn't. You're wrong. I, I mean, he's okay. He's a robot. Uh, and, yeah, so there's... Some of the stuff he said was a little Dinklage-y, but that wasn't bad. Nobody that's really noticeable. Um, nobody majorly noticeable. I mean, uh, Eric a Aviar, who's kind of like, you know, he's been in a couple of movies. He voices Master Rahul. Uh, but anyway, that's, uh, that. yeah, so the voice acting is pretty good in that game. Um, the missions themselves are actually pretty cool. Like, the story-based missions, there's a lot of really interesting stuff you get to do there. So there's story-based missions, and then there's little story-based side quests, and there's a bunch of those as well, so it probably took me a good... If you wanted to do just the story-based missions, that might take you six hours, but if you do all the side quests at the same time when they open up, that probably takes you about maybe f 10 hours, 10, 15 hours, depending on how well you do. Yeah. And I thought that was very... It, it, they're very well done. They're very interesting. They lead... Uh, some of the side quests lead to some really interesting lore questions. Because I, I mentioned, brought this up last week, but there's a mission that you do when you're scanning the Vex, 
mind, which are the Vex are like a group of one of the main enemies in the game, and they're a group of machines, uh, sentient bioorganic machines, and um, they uh, you scan them, and then the Vex refer to you as the creature possessed by the thing that we cannot. Uh, simulate and the Vex are a are a construct that are so powerful that they are able to simulate anything. They're able to simulate the whole universe, but for some reason they cannot simulate your light, which I thought was very interesting because it all and not only does it bring into you know characterize the Vex a little bit, but also kind of raises questions about what the hell the light is, um, and and whether this power that you're wielding is really is is. Is it is useful or, or what what exactly is? Hmm. There are four main locations in the game so far. Um, there's Earth, the European, which takes place in the European Dead Zone, which is this kind of Eastern European town that has been like that looks like a spooky forest. That's a pretty cool location. There's Titan, which is a um, oceanic. This takes place in a bunch of like ocean platforms and then a big arcology that you can explore. And there's like a huge raging ocean and you can see Saturn in the distance. So they've terraformed Titan in this. Yes. Okay. Pretty much all the planets that can be terraformed in, in Destiny have been terraformed. Then there's Nessus, which is like is a. Is that world. explained anywhere or is it just like. Yeah, it, that happened during the Golden Age. The Traveler gave humanity the technology right. to terraform. In the 30 seconds of story at the beginning of the first game. It is a bit better explained than this one. Okay. Um, then there's Nessus, which is a rogue planet that's just kind of zooming through the solar system that's been captured by the solar system gravity, like a little tiny moon uh, that's been almost completely like taken planet? over the days. What? Like a rogue planet? It's like was... a rogue planet that I'm pretty sure has been now been captured by the sun's gravity, and it's now become a, a staple. I like guess it's entering into a stable orbit. So does, like... How, like... I, I don't know, I guess it depends on the scale. Maybe they don't mention them at all, but, like, the, all the... Like, the the Kuiper Belt? Like, any of those planets? Planetoids? Uh, no, not not the Kuiper Belt. We do get to the, the fourth location is Io. Okay. Which is pretty cool. Now, like, they do... They, it is mentioned in the lore that there are asteroids that have, have like, mining facilities and stuff on are them. they terraformed Io? Yeah. So, is it, like, really yellow? Yep. Okay, good. Because it is a sulfur world, right? Yeah, no, it's extremely yellow. Okay. Um, good. I was probably one of my favorite moons. I like I like Titan as my favorite. Besides the moon, my, Titan is my favorite moon. So all the locations moon are pretty is cool. boring. What? Our moon is boring. Oh, it's great, man. It's great that it's there, the, but it's boring. It's the uh, it's the densest object for size in the solar system. I, know, I think Jordan's pretty dense. <laughs> it's the random stab at Jordan. I don't know, it's, you know, our moon is great. I like our moon. I like looking up at it and be like, that's another thing in space, and we can see it, and we know that it's there. I will say there's, it's a, boring. there's a cool mission. So, like, the, I won't spoil it, but there's a cool mission that takes place on this ship that's uh, right next to the sun. Like, really right next to it, and you're looking, and you, 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 you start the mission, and you look, and literally your whole screen is just sun. For as far as you can see, like, on the very edge, if you turn that way and that way, and you look up. But it's like a sheer wall. It's not even round. It's so large, it's not even round. It's just like a massive wall of sun, oh, yeah, and like it's like... Whole, or something? Where are you? I, will, I don't want to spoil it, but you're pretty darn close. Oh, okay. Um, you're even... I will say you're closer than Mercury. And, uh, it's... That's pretty cool. That that might be the best mission in the game, in my opinion. Um, I will say the final boss fight between you and Dominus Gaul uh, is really disappointing. It's not. It's just a. It's just like he gains. He gains the power of. Uh, you know. He 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 uses his powers against you, and you have access to the light that like you. There's these like little beams of light that you can go into to replenish your light. And so basically all you're doing is you hit him with your super, run out of your super, run to one of these beams of light, just recharge your super in like three seconds, activate your super again, and then hit him with your super again. So it's really boring. So you say it's like it's a like a total eight hours if you do a side quest? No, it's probably six hours if you do the uh, if you just do the main story, but it's probably closer to ten hours if oh, you do okay. all the side quests. Ten, fifteen hours depending on how you take it. Hmm. That's the main game, and and I'd like I like you know it's Destiny's Destiny. It's the same gameplay from before, pretty much. They haven't changed that at all because I thought the gameplay in Destiny One was really really good, so there was no need to play it. It's it's sound, yeah. It's a very polished game. I've only encountered two or three gla graphical uh, hiccups, and that was it. There's been I've been getting a very solid uh, thirty uh, thirty FPS, and uh, I believe ten eighty. 
I don't confirm that, but it is a very solid experience. Like, I haven't noticed any. There's no screen tearing. There's no changes in the uh, frame rate, uh, and it's a pretty. It's a good looking game. Yeah, I think I heard that it was 1080 at 30. And the strikes. Like, there are five strikes uh, available at uh, launch, and they're all really good. I really love the strikes. They're, they're, so, they're fun. Okay. So outside of the strikes, they're, they're just like... And the strikes are, are uh, like, they're kind of like epic. Can you solo them? No. You have to, it's, it's, you have to do it with two other people, but you can join into, like, a random fire team, and you don't have to talk to them, because they're pretty easy. They're not, like, raid difficulty, where you have to yeah. actively, like, solve puzzles and coordinate, but you can you can generally get through with, with, with two other competent players. And they're really fun. They're like the la from the last game. They're just like a, a more high-end mission. And those are fun. And there's five of them. Here's where some of the problems come in. You cannot choose which strikes you want to play. In the first Destiny game, you could choose... If you wanted to play a specific strike, you could go in and play that specific strike. This one, there is a strike playlist that randomizes, and you cannot choose which specific one. So I've played the th same strike three times, and there's one strike I've yet to play. Is there a reason? Like, did they explain why that that's the way it is? No, it's just uh, it's just a gameplay decision that is not explained by the by the story. I don't know why they decided to do that, but they have. You can also not go back and replay any of your missions. Well, you can, but you need to be part of a fire team to do so, a dedicated fire team. You can't play it solo, and you can't play with randoms. You have to be part of a dedicated fire team, I think. I haven't been figured out a way how to do it solo yet. That's very annoying, because there's a lot of uh, missions in the game I wanted to replay, because they were genuinely quite fun, unlike the first game, and I can't play them. So the story has been improved, the story missions have been improved, but I can't play them again and, and experience them again. You can replay the side missions, but you can't replay the story missions. I don't understand it, because you could in the first game. Easily. That was one of the better things about it, is it was really easy. Um, and the shaders thing. So yeah. in the first game, shaders were something like you could just change the cosmetics of your armor, and they were you, you had one, and one would shade your entire armor for uh forever and you and you would ha keep that shader now w you need five shaders to shade all five pieces of your armor and or you need four shaders to shade your four pieces of your armor sorry and they're single use items so if you get like a set of really good shaders use them once you're done so don't use shaders until you have a set of armor that you really like and you're willing to keep because don't waste them and that's annoying yeah I will say, uh, people, you know, there there are, you can buy game, uh, there is a pay-to-win mechanic. I do not like that. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's not, it's not, I don't want it in there at all, but it's, you don't need, you don't need to buy to level up like I thought you could. You get level up gear, you, you level up pretty quickly, and you can get gear from just doing side quests and uh, strikes and patrols and all that sort of thing. So you don't need to buy stuff to level up, but it, the option is there, and it's it's there. So that's that's another thing I really don't like. And the raids are back, and I heard the new raid, the uh, the Leviathan raid, is supposed to be really fun. Can't play it, because I don't have five, uh, I don't know five of the people who play the game. So, <coughs> so and, you, and that's I'm locked out of the in-game That's content. not like a randomized fire team that you can do. No, you have to join, like, a... You have to be part of, like, a, a dedicated team talking to each other. And I don't know if five of the people play the game, so... And I've heard that the Leviathan Raid is the funnest part of the game, and I'm locked out of it again. I mean, there's probably, if you went on, like, r slash Destiny Fire Team or something, you could find people to play with. Yeah, even, but I want to play, you know... Yeah, I, I, I know. I shouldn't have to do that to play the funnest content of the game. Like, I know it's an MMO, but... I don't know. I feel like there's a middle ground here somewhere. Where maybe they could have, like, a solo raid. I don't know. I don't know. There has to be some sort of solution to that. Yeah. So, that's my... I would recommend... If you like the first Destiny, definitely pick up the second one if you haven't already. It's a, it's a fun game. I would recommend playing it, even if you don't want to do any of the major online stuff. Because it is a fun 15, you know, 10-hour game experience. Um, if you want to wait for the price to drop a bit, that's... That's up... You know, obviously, that's up to you. I, I think it is worth the $60... Or the eighty dollars as it stands now. There's enough content there to keep you entertained for a while, uh, just even as as a solo player. But I, I also wouldn't say you know like a, maybe a price drop to fifty dollars or forty dollars. I I definitely think that's very fair. It's a lot better than the first one in most regards. Yeah, those, yeah. Are, my, those are my thoughts. Cool. I mean, yeah, it's. I still don't think it's 
in my thing, but it people have definitely people who seem to like the first one definitely seem to be uh, more more uh, receptive about this one being good, and then it just seems like the people who want to pile on Destiny hate are piling it on for the sake of it. Um, from a technical standpoint, I don't I've never really had any problems with Bungie games. They always seem to work well, so. I'm surprised Is Activision that? didn't rush this one out the door and cause it to have a whole bunch of problems. Yeah. Because um. I, I get the sense that, that the Eververse thing, the microtransactions, are, are definitely Activision, not not Bungie. I get that sense. Yeah. Could be wrong. I have no conf I have no solid confirmation on that. That's a tumor if I've ever seen it. That that planet is sick. That's a tumor. <laughs> Not a tumor. Not a tumor. Whatever. So what uh, is it? Sidetrack to uh Elite again. You're talking about uh capital motherships or whatever. This could be you know, these could be those. What um, is it? Well it's <clears throat> one of 175 discovered Thargoid sites. Um, Are these those barnacle things? Uh, no, separate from the barnacles. Uh, the barnacles were like little tiny little, little growth things in the ground. Maybe the barnacles grow into these things, I don't know. Uh, and actually just recently in this, uh, in the 2.4 update, people have discovered that um, the barnacles are actually starting to grow, sort of unrelated. Um, but there's, they're starting to multiply in the areas where they were, and there's a lot more sort of spires, a lot like this sort of stuff coming out of the ground. So are they terraforming the planet? Uh, I don't know, but in this sort of space down here in the center piece, I don't actually have the tools to get in there right now. Uh, you need to have some Thargoid artifacts to get in there. But there, it's like, kind of like a map room, uh, I think. You can activate the central spire with Thargoid artifacts, and that pretty much illuminates the entire room in what looks like a representation of the galaxy. It, maybe it's something else. Uh, since 2.4 came out, um, the Thargoids themselves, the, the interceptors that we've seen, do a similar effect uh, when their shields go down. So maybe that could be related. Um, maybe they're trying to make more Raxlas if Raxla is in itself a planet. Uh, but I would assume Raxla would look a lot like this if that theory is correct. Uh, and the sounds, this like the, the audio guys at Frontier are in a fucking league of their own, man. Like the audio in this game is fucking top notch. So good. The ship is so fucking tiny. Can <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is one of the sites. Now this isn't new to 2.4. This is sort of older, but we haven't visited one yet on Pixel Junkies. So I figured we'd pop over to one. It looks like there's look. a bunch of eggs down there waiting to latch onto your face. Yeah, and there's also. Um, are, so are the Thargoids like? Do they are they just the ships, or are they like little aliens, like kind of like you? Uh, I mean, there them? are in, in the lore there are definitely more humanoid Thargoids. There's like they're like not not humanoid as in like bipods, but humanoid as in you know small walking creatures. Um, so I mean, maybe there's just multiple different types of species, like like drones, I guess, in Star Wars. Drones can be humanoid or ship, you know? Yeah. Um, sort of to that effect, I guess. There's all different kinds of Thargoids. Or Maybe like the Zerg be... from StarCraft, where you can get like the little, you know, tiny yeah. Zerg or the big spaceship Zerg. Yeah, so, anyway, I have no idea what the hell this is, but it's uh, definitely interesting. Looks like Frodo got a throw ring into it. <laughs> Which is actually interesting, because uh, we probably won't have time on the podcast. Um, Frodo's in the new 2.5. 2.8 update or whatever. <laughs> Frodo get, DLC. Get him to the, get him to Mordor. Uh, but just yesterday, they found a another Thargoid ship that doesn't look like one that we've seen before, uh, and it actually kind of looks like the Thargoids in the old games, where they were kind of this octagonal, very very basic octagon sort of prism shape. And, well, to uh, be fair, the game, the older games were so old that yeah. it was pretty much wireframe spaceships. But uh, I guess I'll throw a picture up of what of the one that they found yesterday, um, and it kind of almost has a similar structure to this because the front of it has like like these teeth coming out of it, very similar to that, except they're holding a sphere, uh, and I, maybe the sphere is the weapon or something. So it's uh, like a scout or a probe. Yeah. So I mean, you could talk about it. I could talk about it all night. There's supposedly different factions of Thargoids. Maybe the small Thargoids are. 
passive faction of Thargoids, and the other ones that we've been encountering are like an aggressive faction, and then maybe the small ones are running away from the other Thargoids, or maybe... I mean, there's all kinds of different theories that could be probable at this point. Maybe the the Thargoid, the, the small scout ships, maybe they come out of, like, these base ships, if that's a thing. So, I mean, it, it's... Whatever the hell they're doing with this, they, they've they done a great job. This is absolutely what this game needed. And, and that's, like, when it comes out with an update, don't release everything immediately. It's like, you have this now, and this, and this, and this, and this. And then you play with it for a week, and then it's boring. And this, it's like... A slow burn. Yeah, it's like, this is all the stuff we're planning to add. We're not going to tell you about it. We're not going to tell you when it's added. We're not going to tell you where it is. And then just, like, people slowly start discovering things and learning it. And then, like, every day, like, every day for the past... Well, since it came out, it was on the 26th. Like, something new has been introduced, and something, like, new has happened. And it's, like, really cool. I hope they get to keep this up for weeks and weeks. It's it's fun as dicks. So, it, it's it, it's hard to, like, you know, obviously there's a lot of gameplay in there, but... Have they made it to Earth yet? Uh, no, but I actually, just before we started recording this, uh, saw that somebody had found a Thargoid that I actually dropped into a station. So really? like Yeah, so there were... Like, you, when you drop into a station and you can dock and stuff, there was a Thargoid flying around there, and it was... It seemed like it was extremely pissed off, so I don't know I don't know what happened with that. Yet. Was it a calling. glitch? Uh, was it a glitch? Yeah, like, did uh, you just spawn in the space? I mean, know? it could be just... Maybe <laughs> what it, happened? Help! <laughs> it, it could be that they're moving in on station territory, or it could just have been, like, a, a freak spawn. Uh, I've looked for them near stations, because that's how we were doing our supply run. We wanted to find a Thargoid that was really close to a station, so it wouldn't take us that long to go back and forth. Well, isn't it, uh... Isn't... Well, aren't most space stations, like, really heavily defended with, like, point defense weapons yep. and stuff? Uh, yep. Hard to, like, I know Thar Thargoids can take out fleets, but, like, well, I guess if they did that EMP thing, it would just wipe out the station. You really don't have any defense against that, do you? It seems like a temporary... Like a temporary shutdown, but at the same time... Like, they could do a lot of damage. Yeah, I don't think, like normal human weapons don't damage them. They they can briefly take down their shields, but they don't actually damage their hull. So those, like, fuck-off cluster missile things, they don't actually do anything? Um, well, the, 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 the they're called axe missiles that they, uh, they released for the... No, not those, like, you, oh, those... Oh, the pack hounds. Yeah. Yeah, they don't, it doesn't look like they do anything. So they just, like, what, like, just bounce off the hull, or...? Um... If you can actually get them to hit, which is very difficult, because the Thargoids ha apparently have, like, a super accurate ECM uh, module that just scatters your missiles whenever you shoot it. Like, I, I've... In one of uh, one of my fights before they added the Axe missiles earlier in the week, I was just unloading pack hounds into it, and they were just scattering all over the place. I, I managed to get a few salvos to hit, but I don't know if it did any damage. I don't think it did. So, like, what about, like... Uh, like, obviously, they might have, like, a, like reflective... Plating or or brace of plating or something like yeah. that to nullify your like uh, your your laser or energy based weapons. But what about your? Are there any like slug weapons essentially for lack of like a like a mass accelerator cannon or something like that? Or uh, could you hit them with just like just like I I would find it hard to find I would find it hard to believe that any substance can can shrug off like a a like a two-ton tungsten rod being fired at, like, almost almost the speed of light. Like, I would find it very hard for something to shrug that off. Well, I guess it's... it's I, we, we know very little at this point about their makeup, but it, from what I've know, from what I know from killing the thing yesterday is their hearts are very um, important, as, as you'd expect. Uh, so getting their shields down, and then you need to damage one of the hearts... And then as soon as you do that, once you start taking the shield down, then you can damage it. But it seems like at this point, the only thing <clears throat> the only thing that does any serious damage to the Thargoid Hearts are the Axe Missiles. Um, I mean, you can probably damage it with other stuff, but it seems like they're very resilient. Are, against... axe, are axe Missiles uh, effective against players? Or are they yes. only good against... No, they're very effective against players. So are they just like mini nukes or something? Um, I... Th I think people have dissected it from the trailer. I haven't looked at the missiles in the game itself yet, because looking at a missile is difficult when it's going so fast. Um, and I don't. There's no other way to really look at the missile. But I bet a nuke would stop them. 
I mean, maybe. <laughs> maybe it just bounced off the shield. Hey, Jesus know, Christ! If you could even hit him with it. Um, but it, it, yeah, it seems like it's made with Guardian technology, and that's... They were like an, a, another, a separate alien species that we found remnants of uh, over the past year and a half. And it seems like the, the Thargoids really don't like Guardian technology, because in the couple of instances where they've both been exposed to one another, there's been kind of... The Thargoids have kind of freaked out a little bit. The One of them was the, the base that we were just at. You Once you get inside there, if you put um, Guardian relics inside of that map room or whatever it is... Um, it basically starts exploding everything and superheating the inside of the room until everything in there is dead. Um, and it gets very, very hot. I saw one guy who stays inside the station for as long as he can, and it, uh, yeah, it took him. It, it destroyed a lot of shit. The second instance is where earlier in the week, uh, a player dropped a guardian relic to a thargoid. Like a thargoid was in front of them, and they dropped it, and the thargoid immediately like snapped onto it and shot it, and it exploded. So it's like, all right, well, these guys clearly don't like this shit. I haven't seen them shoot anything else other than players who attack them. So I don't know if they're afraid of the Guardians or they hate the Guardians. The, the Thargoids, you're, you're, you're describing the Thargoids almost as, like, they're not even, like, intelligent. They are, but they're more yeah. animalistic, you know what I mean? It yeah, seems it's, like, like instinctual, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and the other thing is, like, you could read into, there's a lot of lore about the Guardians as well that we've kind of deciphered from a couple of their sites. And one of the key ones is that they were more about biological warfare because it was less harmful to the environment. Like they would, they would make, Diseases? like they would make, they would make a virus over like mining metals to make missiles. So it seems very much like the Guardians could have manufactured the the Thargoids, interesting, as like a super virus to wipe out their enemies or the separate factions of Guardians that they hated. And maybe it got away from them, and that's how the Guardians were destroyed, and now we're left with the Thargoids. I mean, there's a, it's a whole bunch of really cool potential outcomes to it, and they're all really cool. Um, Interesting. Or maybe the Guardians just encountered the Thargoids. I don't know. So are the Thargoids and are the Guardians not allowed around anymore? They kind of remind me of the uh, f Forerunners from Halo, or like any of those similar, like, precursor yeah. alien races that pop up. Over science fiction. Yeah, they're very forerunnery. Uh, I don't Jesus, think they're around anymore. Bright. Was that it's fucking bright? Oh yeah. You just imagine like the little like you, you come out of hyperspace. And you just <laughs> 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 um, from the stuff that we've collected, it says they went extinct. Extinct about a extinct. They went yeah they went stink about a <laughs> uh, a million or two years ago. Oh, okay. Um, just like the dinosaurs. Maybe they still exist. And maybe there's a faction of them somewhere, but I mean that's that's a narrative beat we haven't hit yet. Um, but it, it it seems like I don't know how the hell David Raven has done this. Like a lot of this stuff has been elite, like canon for decades, and it's just now with this game that he's like, yeah, okay, I guess I guess we have the game engine enough to to do this stuff. So we'll actually tell a story now, and they're like, they're just getting to the point now where they can start doing some really cool shit. And it's taken so long for them to get there that it's like anything they do with this narrative is going to be like, you know, absolute, you know, blue balls up to this point. Everyone's just going to be like creaming their pants, me included. You think like at, 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 at like if there's a um, elite convention or whatever, he gets up on stage just like, thar and you just hear like Ugh! <laughs> in the back of the room, and like three guys like I gotta go to the bathroom. Yeah, man, I was shit baked earlier in the week. Like, yeah, I came back from work because I've been out like the, where I've been working this week. I've been without cell service, so I came back in town. I look and there's like twenty six messages from Aaron being like, "Oh man, Thargoids! Oh man!" I it sat down. I sat down when the update finished, and I was like shaking. I was like, <laughs> "This is the moment. Like, this is it, <laughs> Thargoids." I was like, "I don't even want to go hunt one down. I'm actually like nervous about doing this." But it's like it's it's so good, and it's such a great. It's such a great experience. Like I don't know, I, I I'm so, super biased about it. But speaking of great experiences, um, or not, depending on how I feel about it, I went to see Kingsman earlier in the week. Just because I want to spill your hand too quick, Adam. Well, you know, I just want to. Uh, I want to. We've been talking about Elite a lot, and I just want to. We have other yeah, topics. No, yeah. Get on to it. Uh, so I went to see uh, Kingsman Two: The Golden Circle, which is obviously a sequel to Kingsman. Is it a ring? 
The golden circle. Yeah. Is it a ring? Yeah. Like, well, does he, it, does it, Aggie get married or whatever his name is? Kind of, I mean, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Eggsy is his name. Oh, whatever. Uh, so basically, the film is about the Kingsmen are wiped out in a surprise attack, and then so um, Eggsy, who is now Agent Galahad, and Merlin have to go meet up with their kind of sister organization, the Statesmen, which is the U.S. kind of version of the Kingsmen, and they're are all they super redneck. Is Jeff Foxworthy yes. part of it? No, but Jeff Bridges is. Oh, <laughs> I believe Jeff Bridges plays. Uh, so. All of the Kingsmen are na- their code names are based off of Arthurian lore. So Agent Galahad, Agent Percival, Agent uh, Lancelot, Merlin is their kind of tech guy. King um, Arthur is the. Is leader. there like a double O Nigel or anything? No. Oh. Get so the Statesmen. Uh, oh, and and the Kingsmen pretend to be tailors. The Statesmen are whiskey brewers, and all of their names are based off of drinks. So their tech guy is Ginger Ale, played by Her- Halle Berry, and Charlie. Um, what? Uh, was was um, is she even like Channing Tatum? Uh, is, is she even Agent American? Whiskey. Uh, and then there. No, is he whiskey? No, he's tequila. Is Halle Berry like American? Like obviously she was. She, I think American, so. What, okay. So, I mean, like, what, what her... Uh, anyway, her she's lineages. Ginger. I think... I can't remember exactly, but I think Channing Tatum is Agent... Agent Tequila. And then there's another guy who's Agent Whiskey. And then there's... And the main guy is, like, Agent Bourbon or something like that. And it's all very American, but it's played to the point where it's it's funny. Like, like they're like... Mm, like, shoot, boy. That's some... That's some weird ass spy stuff going on over there. I tell you what, it's like if Hank Hill was uh, was a secret agent, Hank honestly. Is but there, it's really well done. Is it's, there it's, like Agent Ford Ranger? I don't know. <laughs> I'd be funny if Dale Gribble was in it. <laughs> Boom Howard. I need to enter your me. vagina in order to plow you for information. Oh, I don't know. Is that what Dale Gribble sounds like? <laughs> I'm sorry, Rusty no. Shackleberg. Anyway, um, it's the movie is good, but not great. The first Kingsman movie is one of the best spy movies ever. Isn't that always the case, though? And I do mean that. The second one is just all right. Sequels tend to not be it, as good. It as goes a bit one. too far. So you know how the first one had a couple over the top scenes, but that was it. Like there was the scene at the end with all the heads exploding. I mean, no, I didn't see it. So no. Oh well, there's a couple of really good scenes. There's a scene, there's a fight scene in the church, which is absolutely fantastic. They try to recapture that in this one, and they go too far to recapture the magic. Like they just push it a little bit too far each time, and it doesn't like every. That's the case with everything. The plot of the movie, they push that a little bit too far. Like it's a little bit too absurd. Mm. The fight scenes are like a little John Wake, too where it's absurd. Almost too self-aware. Yeah. Mm. John, it's like the different. It's, it's like John Wick Two versus John Wick One, where John yeah. Wick Two is a bit too full of itself. It's like that, but like more. It's all. It's too full of itself. The plot is full too too full of itself. The fight scenes are too full of itself. Well, it's like the mo- the first movie does like this. Yeah. And then the second one's like, well, th- then everyone's like, yeah, that was a good movie. And then the second one's like, yeah, this. And it's like, okay, it's <laughs> now too much. no nothing's a deal breaker. It's still a good movie, still worth watching. But it didn't. I didn't come out of it completely wowed like I did with the first one. Like, I mean, me and Thomas went to go see the first one, and we were both blown away. We came because we nobody was expecting anything from that movie. I was like, oh yeah, the Kingsman. That's yeah, the only thing. I mean, I've heard good things about it, and I still don't expect much of it based on like. I don't know, just the subject matter, I guess, doesn't appeal to me. You, you should watch it. Movie. It's genuinely a good movie. Um, but we were just but like, you know what I mean, right? Like, yeah, looking, I, at, looking at the trailers and stuff, I'm like, eh. Yeah. Give it a watch, though. I mean, yeah. it's worth a watch. Yeah. Um, but uh, just the second one, it was it was all right, but it wasn't it wasn't good. If that make, it, it was good, but it wasn't great. Yeah. Um, if I think the third one, they're going to have to tone it back a bit. And there's a couple of character that deaths in this that are completely unreasonable, and I've re- like they're out of their like main characters are just like, yeah kind okay. of, and I don't like it like they they spoil this in one of the trailers. Uh, agent the original Agent Galahad comes back. Harry, if his name is uh, played by who's that guy who's in Colin Firth um, plays him and Colin Firth yeah he's a, he's the guy in in the no yeah. in 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 every like rom com right. He so was there's in, only like a finite amount of agents. 
Yeah, I guess. Anyway, he comes back from the dead. He, saw- he gets shot in the head, and he comes back, because apparently, you know, that kills some people. Not him, though, I guess. Uh, he gets shot through the eyeball, uh, and kind of walks that off. Um, and it is explained why it does so, but I don't understand why they brought him back. They didn't need to bring him back. The other characters that they had were fine, and they got rid of those to bring this guy back. And I don't have anything against this character, but why did you bring him back at the expense of the other characters? I don't know. It's just... The whole thing was a bit... I don't know. The whole thing was just a bit silly. Yeah. Just, that's how I would describe this movie. Too... Almost too silly. Almost. I didn't find it too bad, but I definitely could see why some other people found it... Would not like this movie. I If if somebody came up to me and I didn't like Kingsman 2, I would understand that. Yeah. Uh... There Does were the same people make it? I think so. Okay. I'm pretty well, sure. At least at least that was the case then. Hopefully. There were there were a couple of good things about it though. Like in at the end of the first movie, um Eggsy Like there's a plot to destroy the to basically kill almost all the people on Earth to stop the overpopulation uh of Earth, but like like the elites of society, so like the celebrities and the rich people and the and the nobles and that kind of stuff, end up in this underground bunker that's designed to protect them from this signal that's going to kill everybody. And one of the people in there is this princess who's been kidnapped, and she doesn't want to go along. Uh, she's a Belgian princess, heir to the Belgian royal house, and she she doesn't want to go along with this plan because obviously it's going to be killing all you know people, like, billions of people, and she's like, no, I'm not gonna do that. So at the end of the movie, Eggsy finds her in a cell, and she's like, can you let me out? It's like, I'll let you out after I'm done, I gotta go save the world. It's like, I gotta go, and she says, if I let you out, uh, or he, he says, uh, if you, if, if I let you out, or if I save the world, can I have a kiss? And she says, if you let me out, you can do it in the ass. <laughs> and he goes, okay. And then he beat, he, he ends up saving the world, and at the end of the movie, he goes back in the last, like, like little bit of the of that scene is him get like opening the cell and then taking his glasses off and, and the last thing you see is is like the woman getting on on all fours. Anyway, there So then is the credit music just like a wet like No, cuz then there's another scene after that. Oh. But then this movie opens and they're still dating. Like she's now dating this Belgian princess and oh. that's actually really cool. I really like that cuz I thought what was going to be like a throwaway character gag at the end of this movie, they're actually in a committed relationship now. That's pretty cool. Um, I mean, anyway, so yeah, it, it's uh, it, it's just an all right movie. Um, definitely see it if you go see it if you le- if you if you watch the first Kingsman and you enjoy the story and you kind of want to find out what happens next. But I wait till I wait till Netflix to see this one. Honestly, is my is my recommendation. Uh, is the first one on Netflix? Yes, definitely go see the first one. The first one is amazing. Go see one it. of the, or th- somehow watch it. It is one of the best spy movies of all time. It is a spy movie. The first. Kingsman is a is a love letter to all the old James Bond spy movies, yet somehow ends up being its own thing. It's astounding. I, I it's really excellent. One of the best ever spy movies, in my cool. humble opinion. Coolio. Anyway, I don't know what else is on the topic list because I can't see it. Uh, uh yeah, we can keep going. I will, I'm just gonna try and fight a Thargoid here, and then we can probably wrap up. But for the meantime, <clears throat> we did get to see some sweet ass. Uh, well, I guess maybe we'll talk about uh, this because it's probably maybe bigger. Uh, the Red Dead Redemption 2 story trailer came out. Yes. Um, and it looks really good. It does look really good. One of the coolest lines I've ever heard was the main character is talking to this guy. One of maybe. There might be multiple main characters. Oh, man, might be doing a GTA 5. Yeah. One of the hospital main characters is talking to another guy. And he's Arthur saying... Morgan? What? I think his name is Arthur Morgan. I don't know. And then he says, uh, you're... Uh, I know that your, I know that your mother, uh, uh, I know that your mother is still grieving. But if you betray, or if you do, if you don't get me the money, I'll make sure that she stays in black on your behalf. And I'm like, wow, that's an awesome line. <laughs> that was great. Uh, that whole trailer, it looks to, like in the first movie, you kind of play, a, a like a not a lawman, but like you're you're playing some. It's like a story of vengeance. A game. What? A game. I think. Did you say movie? I said story. Oh, okay. So I said movie. No, I. I well, if I said movie, I meant story. Oh, it's yeah. a story of vengeance in the first game. Correct. Uh, I mean, like you're not you're not a you're not an outlaw in the first game is what I'm saying for the most part. It, it seems I mean, like kind of, yeah. I mean yeah, kind of. Um, we're okay. What I'm saying is in this game, you vi- this character, the one that they show in this trailer, very much seems to be a criminal. Like he is not a good guy. Yeah. So I or, mean, Red Dead Redemption. Um, the first game 
uh, supposedly takes place after Red Dead Redemption 2, which makes the names fucking confusing. But in the first game, you play as John Marston, who's kind of... He left his gang sort of under maybe not great terms. Uh, like, him and his wife were, like, almost dead. And he's like, all right, I have, we have to stop this life because I'm starting a family. And his gang wasn't too hot on that. And so then I think the cops got involved, or, like, the authorities got involved, and they wanted the him. Cops. Yeah, well, yeah, whatever, whatever they call it. You know it. how fast you're riding that horse? Ain't no Thargoids in here. Where are all the Thargoids at, man? We, we encountered four in the beginning of the yeah. game, of Let's Play, and then we're not going to be able to find any. Yeah. And so uh, they basically have you track down all of your old gang members and sort of kill them off one by one. Um, and, I mean, obviously John kind of wants to do that himself, but it seems like John's more about just putting things right rather than just straight up getting revenge for stuff. Yeah, that's more what I um, meant. Like, like I, it's yeah. been a while since I played the first one. Yeah. Uh, I really should replay it, but, like, this one definitely seems... The main character is definitely... Or this, this character is definitely an out-and-out -out criminal. Yeah. Like, you see him extorting people for money, shooting people, robbing trains, yeah, wrangling and, and it's, horses. It's honestly, like, if you play the first game, the amount of exposition you get about what happened before, you know, John came to Blackwater or whatever and started this life with his wife, like, it's a really cool story, and it would make an awesome game. And I even remember playing it the first time, like, there's a lot of cool backstory here, and definitely playing it the second time, after it was announced, I'm like, all this exposition is going to be amazing if this game is, in fact, like a prequel to everything that happened. And it very much seems that way. Like, we have uh, Arthur Morgan, who's who's a character I don't think was mentioned before. Um, so I guess they can kind of, your actions can kind of be up in the air because nobody knew who that character was. But it's definitely still like the, the Vanderlyn gang with, like, Bill Williamson and Dutch and all that stuff. And so it's going to be really cool to fi like follow that whole story through again because there's going to be a lot of awesome set pieces there. Like, based on the first game, they were outlaws. Like, they were outlaws in all of America, just about. I think one of the throwaway lines is like, John Marson says, "We heard there was a prize if you got to being wanted in all fifty states." So, like, you know, they were they were bad. Well, he people. wouldn't have said fifty. Was that? He wouldn't have said fifty. Uh, well, he does in the thing. Does but anyway. he? Oh, I think so, yeah. There's not 50 states at that point. Well, it was 1911. Yeah, so. Hawaii didn't join until like 19... Oh, here's one. 1940s, I think? I don't know. Maybe don't he did. Me on that. Maybe, maybe he just said if we were wanted in all of them or something. Yeah. I can't remember. I'm sure. I know. I get what you mean, though. Um, so it's cool. There's going to be a lot of cool heists and a lot of cool missions there. And to see like how John gets taken into that gang and how he meets Abigail and has his, uh, his children and stuff. And like what happened to his daughter. coming out of it. They're like, I guess, like light feelers. They're feeling me with light. Now, light bright, paint things with light. See, I always feel bad when they don't get mad at me right away, and then I gotta shoot them. <laughs> it's like kicking a cat. Yeah, kind of. Pissing it off for the sake of it. There's a bunch of okay. Well, just all right. Now you're now you're annoying me. Why? Well, they've been taking escape pods. Like people will eject from these ships and escape pods. You can see I have one. Um, targeted here, and they're taking them. Like, I see if... Okay, look, this guy is scanning an occupied escape pod right now, I think. Why? Let's see if he takes it. I don't know, but they're very interested in taking them. Yep, he's taking this one. Some Boop. sort of tractor beam? I don't know. They seem to like the escape pods. So anyway, let's deploy my fighter and fuck this guy up as much as we can. He's gonna fuck us up a lot more, but... I'm interested to see, to see how this thing moves. But anyway, so uh, Red Dead uh, Redemption 2. That story trailer was awesome. Like, the music is great. It seems... Uh, what, what was the... What was the main theme of the first game? Born into Violence? Was that what it was called? Born into Sin? There was some... Yeah, I guess. I can't, I can't remember what it was called, but there was... It was the... Like, the low whistle. Like... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know the names of the songs that were in it. Sorry for those listening. That was probably really <laughs> horrible. Uh, but it was uh, that was mad. a great theme. I made a real oh, mess. Oh Jesus, you're gonna die! Oh man, that was cool. They're in like formation. Is it oh, yeah. the? I forgot the these aren't locked. Axe missiles or whatever. 
Uh, yeah, sub targets. Let's get Born onto trouble is what it's called, and I don't know if that's the main theme of the game, but it's kind of like that's. I think this might be the menu theme or the theme that yeah. plays at the beginning of the song. Yeah, that and had great. It's awesome. Like I, I, when I'm writing any Western stories, I have that playing in the background on a loop because it gets me in that Western mindset, and you could definitely hear um, uh, overtones of that. Jesus, that thing's fast. Yeah, it had. Like, it's the... way more maneuverable than your slow mm -hmm. ass. Jeez, Adam, why don't you join the Thargoids? You see, if I could just imagine your... Uh, oh, man, that was a hit. Just Fuck imagine you your ship... Uh, <laughs> fire! This was... <laughs> now, are we targeting this one? Yes. Oh, man, it was a hit on you. Yeah, the Thargons are fucking me up. Can you ram him? No, man, oh man, him. he just dodged out of the way. That was real quick. I did hit him, but you know what this reminds me of? Do you remember mm. in the uh, the third uh, Star Trek movie, uh, Star Trek Beyond? Nope. Oh, you didn't. See oh yeah. Oh, the new ones. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, do you remember the little you, you know the little pod things that tear apart the Enterprise? Yes. The little whatever they are. That's what the the little things remind me of. Yeah. Pretty close. Um, if you do target the swarm. Yeah. It, it mentions the size of the swarm, which kind of also is unnerving. Because I've only seen swarm sizes of 32. Like, if I target this over here now, uh, swarm size 24. Okay, so maybe they are in smaller sizes. But I'm assuming that they get massive. Um, can you destroy a swarm, or will that just like keep replenishing the numbers? You can, but it'll just release another swarm if it loses a lot. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen them deploy... Multiple swarms. These things are powerful. Yep, and they don't just like they don't just unleash all their shit immediately. You know, it's like they'll fuck you up with as little as they can. Are the hearts those things that kind of like propel it along? Uh, maybe. I mean, like the the main the front pedals that you can see here. Four of those are the things I need to sh I need to destroy. So maybe the heart is behind them or inside of them. Uh, but as you can see, it's like my, my shields are still up. The the yellow rings around my uh, I have a different HUD color here. Um, the yellow rings are my shield, and you can see the percentage underneath is 85, and that's my hull. So it's just whatever it's shooting me is just going straight through my shield, and its shields are currently up, so I can't see the damaged heart anymore. But um, one of them is down to 70 percent. So we also got a uh, trailer for, or like a gameplay trailer for Star Wars Battlefront 2. Starring John Boyega. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, go figure. And, uh, he, he, no, the trailer was starring John Boyega, where he's like, Hi, I'm John Boyega, and this is Star Wars Battlefront 2 in this game. And there seems to be a lot of game modes, like, there seems to be, a, like, a short but good campaign on the way, where you play as, I forget the character's name, but you play, like, an Imperial, uh, an That's Imperial... It sounds Commando. like Jen Urso or something like that. Something what? Versio. Yeah, or something like Versio that. Or something. And is she and you're exploring what happens between episode six and episode seven, but from the point of view of the uh, of a, of the Imperial Remnant, but as it becomes the First Order, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I like that. And there seems to be a bunch of different gameplay modes. Uh, Co-op split split screen is back. There's, you know, the big epic battles. There's the the like the Walker Assault is back, but I think they've kind of changed it up to it where it's not know, always the, Walkers. What? It, it's not always walkers. So, I think there's yeah. there's going to be more there, like just objective based gameplay. There's like just straight up conquest mode. There's space battles. They all look. Re it looks like it's going to be a much more complete game, worthy of your, of your of your dollars than the first game was. Because the first game was laughably absent of content. This it was game, still really fun though. The content it had was great. It yeah, but it didn't, didn't have, have enough of it. Yeah. Like if you can't say Destiny didn't have any content and then say Battlefront had enough content. You no, it definitely didn't have enough content. My problem with Destiny goes beyond not con beyond content, but I mean, Star Wars Battlefront is just Star Wars. Like, I'll take any opportunity I can to fuck around in a pretty realistic representation of Endor or something. You know, it's just it's got. If if this was a new IP, then yeah, it's it's stupid, but it's Star Wars, so it gets a pass. Yeah. Anyway, that one looks good. Uh, definitely check out the trailer. There's nothing really nothing really new. That we saw from that. Um, no, yeah, they just kind of outlined that the basics of what the game. Yeah, like is even be. like the loot system that it's going to have or whatever the yeah. crates. I think they said that the DLC is going to be free for the game, so I would assume uh, that would be cool. Microtransactions or like power up ups. Ass. 
uh, cards will be a thing. We should get that game. The because me and Aaron and, and Sandy and Thomas, friends of the podcast, the pair of them, uh, we all play on PlayStation together. So it'd be fun if we can get that for PlayStation. Oh, I'll be playing the shit out of it anyway. I'll probably get it on PC as well. Do drinking yeah. games with Dave. I mean, we we like almost every weekend. Me and Dave will play that to just do drinking games because it somehow works out to be a perfect game for drinking games. Like we play a bunch of games and try to make a drinking game out of it. Battlefront is perfect for it. So that's a and plus it's Star Wars, so you get to play Star Wars. Uh, oh shit! All right, it's Wake pushed me there. Um, and we also got a teaser trailer for uh, Pacific Rim Two oh, Resurgence. Is. Another John Boyega thing. Uh, Res 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 Uprising, Uprising, sorry, Pacific yeah. Pacific Rim Uprising. So that takes place, I think, ten years after the first oh, is it that Pacific long? Rim. Yeah, I think it was mm -hmm. ten years. They said, and uh, John Boyega plays. Um, so Idris Elba's character, uh, Ivan. Pentagon, Mar Marshall Pentagoff, I think it was. I can't remember what his name. I think it was Pe Pe Pentagoff. Uh, you play. He, he plays his son, and you and he's taking command of Gypsy Avenger, which is the kind of uh, uh, second generation Gypsy Danger. Uh, on the, apparently Charlie Hunnam and I forget the girl's name um, who played uh, the, the you know uh, uh, Mako. In, in the in, in the story will also be making an appearance, but John Boyega is going to be the main character. I don't know what the plot's going to be, except that there's a bunch of new Jaegers. Interesting to note is that uh, Guillermo del Toro is not associated with this with this. Uh, is not? No, I don't think so. Oh, he's I definitely Andrew not directing. He was directing. Okay. I don't think he's directing. Fuck me. Are you uh, getting getting blitzed here? Oh, my shield's almost gone. They do damage your shields, but that'd be preferable to keep them up. Um, yeah, no, I, I thought he's, I thought Andrew said he was directing some, but maybe, maybe that's not the case. So, uh, uh, directed by Stephen S. Denight, written by Denight, Emily Campbell, Kira Snyder, and T. S. Nolan from a story by Guillermo. Oh, maybe he said it's not directed by Daryl. Yeah, I thought I didn't think it was. Uh, Jing, uh, uh, what, what was her name? Rinko Kakuri, I believe, and I'm sure Roy is going to uh, correct me on that, but uh, yeah, she played Met Mako. Oh, okay. Is she the one from. Jesus! Oh, my canopy's about to pop. I want to. That's what, fine. I want to go in the warp there. Nah, we're good. Are you sure? Yeah, I got a helmet that'll pop out of my collar when the canopy goes. Let's see if I can break one of his hearts. Oh, that mill's missed. How many missiles do you have? Uh, so I got oh, uh, goes. 38 left in each pod. I got four pods. Oh my god, these fucking... Jesus. Oh, cannabis gone. Oh, there she goes. Shooting blind, and I'm deaf. Man, I'll break one of these fucking things. Damn. Um... And I think that was it for trailers that I, as far as I can remember. Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of so. watching you just getting pulverized by this thing. <laughs> uh, Not really interesting. You might want to con out some of this, uh, some of this, a little. Nah, that's fine. Okay. People watch uh, fighting the Thargoids. All right, sure, whatever. Um, uh, I don't. There's not really not much else really happened. Forza came out. Oh yeah, Forza came that. out and Cuphead came out. I haven't also played that. Cuphead. I really want to. Maybe we can pick. Uh, I don't think it's very expensive. Maybe we can uh, pick that up for. I'd like to. I would like to play that. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's only out for Xbox and PC at the moment. Hopefully, it'll get a PlayStation release. Um, I think uh, I w if we get it for well, depending on what we get it for, I'm, I might have to get uh, I might have to get because um, I'm not sure if it'll, I'm sure it'll run on my PC though. I'm yeah, probably. I'm gonna bug out because I mean, it's gonna kill me before I get the hurt off of it. Repair your ship. Uh, I've been. <laughs> Kind of not paying attention to doing this, and that's something that you need to do. What? Pay attention. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So, I'll just leave. Yeah, that's probably best. Um, and uh, Shadow of War is coming out very soon. Uh, I think the two games that I'm looking forward to most coming out, three games I'm looking forward to coming that are coming out uh, in the fall, are Shadow of War, um, Wolfenstein, and Battlefront. So I'll be picking up a combination of them and or waiting yep. for Christmas for them. Yep, we got, uh, and for me, uh, Vamp Vampire, Vampire is coming out in November as well. 
Vam- vampire? Uh, yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but it's uh, made by the same people that made Remember Me and Life is Strange. Don't nod. <laughs> not now, Thargoids! Motherfucker. No, three times, three times. I've been playing this game a lot in the past three days. Do you think you're going to come out of warp and there's like eight of them? It's like, we hear you've been picking on us. Well, this is really not the ideal time to be, uh... You know, oh, there's... Oh, fuck, there's two of them behind me. Are they Are they attacking? <laughs> it's like, that's the guy who beat me up! I mean, maybe. <laughs> fuck me. Alright, well, they're chasing me now. My ship is turned off. Uh, Why does he look like he's been he's been they've been damaged by a, by one of us? <gasps> that guy. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, this is really cool because this hasn't happened to me before. Why? Just sitting in a fucking <laughs> ship turned off with red light coming from somewhere and a big ass hole in my window with two thargoids behind me. Uh, well, get out of there! I don't know if they're planning on leaving or not, but. I kind of wanted to get out of there because I wasn't sure my thrusters were going to work at all, or my FSD. But yeah, they're uh, pissed at me. Are they? And I, I don't know where I'm going because I can't see because all your sensors are on your windscreen or whatever the hell they call it, space screen. And that's gone now, so I don't know where I'm going. And of course they have me mass locked. Do they? Yeah, let's try this again. What does that mean? Uh, it just basically means it's difficult, I guess lore-wise, difficult for your ship to get a solid lock on where you're jumping because of like other shit next to you so you oh. need to get a, a distance away from it so it's kind of like the gravity wells in the in Star Wars where you can't jump out of a gravity well yeah I, I guess yeah like you can't enter hyperspace near a gravity well I guess I, it would cause you to miss jump like miss it or something which is why episode 7 is kind of bullshit when they're like we're gonna go in at the speed of light through through the shields and like that would work because technically you're you're traveling through an alternate dimension you're not you're not going faster than the speed of light you're going through the dimension but which is contrary to what I said in an earlier episode of the podcast I believe where I messed that up but you're not allowed to exit you your ship automatically exits hyperspace when it hits the outer shell of a, of a, gla- a gravity well because any more than that you're gonna slam into the planet that's why um, the um, um, the Imperial uh, the, the the Imperial Navy in Star Wars has the um, um, Oh my god, the uh, the interceptor. No, not the interceptor. What are the majestic class ships in this? The majestic class interceptor. The, the majestic class interdictor. Interdictors. Yeah, there's there's the interdictor class star destroyers, which are like super, st- which are like the irregular star destroyers, but they got four big whoop, like bubbles on oh, them yeah, essentially, yeah, yeah. and they cause they generate um, gravity wells, and they, if your ship hits them, you can't you come out of hyperspace, and uh, so the Imperials use that uh, to uh, to like blockade like stuff, so the rebels can't get through because they need they need access to hyperspace. It was actually used very effectively at the end of Rebel season three by mm. uh, by Grand Admiral Thrawn. That's wrapped up now, is it? They're on to season four. They're on to season four. Yep, season four is coming out Still very need soon. To watch actually, that. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I guess that'll do it. I'm gonna dock here with docking blind is always fun. <laughs> Trying to find a space station next to a planet when you can't really tell where it is. You just hear somebody count. It's like, I, my, my windscreen broke in space. Can I get a tow? <laughs> just uh, love the idea of a truck, like a like a like a truck, like a tra- like a tow truck, like an actual like like a Chev pickup truck with brackets on it, bringing the line down, hooking it on. You was like, always some new kid, wet behind the ears kid thinks he can take on a third goy, but look what happens. I, I gotta tow your sorry ass back to the space station. Yep. Uh, oh, here we go. Hopefully we can... Let me just open my scanners a little bit. Maybe we can see the station. Uh, yeah, I guess that'll do it for this week, though. Yep. So, uh, Thargoids are out and they're fucking you up. Also, Destiny 2 is I didn't right. say anything about Forza. It's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> some frame rate issues on <laughs> Xbox as well. It's a friggin' mess. Uh, yeah, it's, it's alright. Uh, weird, weird for frame rate issues to be on, on Xbox, because the game does run at 60 uh, on console, they always they always have, apart from the Horizon games because they don't count for some reason. Um, but playing it last night, some weird frame rate issues where it would dip to like even below thirty frames uh, for different scenarios. They have made the visuals a lot better than the last game, so I mean, obviously that's part of the reasoning. What are those things? Uh, what these up up here? Yeah, the, the green lights. stuff. 
Uh, that's just uh, another ship that I have targeted that's yeah. nearby. Uh, I saw it on my sensors earlier. So that's a ship? Uh, this is a station, this one here in particular, that's oh, okay. locked on in the bottom left. But the the, the ship that I had saw I saw was I, I assumed it was coming from the station, so I locked onto it so I could see where it was on my radar. Do you think you know that like caustic stuff that's on the on the hulls of the spaceships we saw that were like just blitzed yeah. by the Thargoids? Do you think they have to like scrape those off by hand? Like some guy out there with a giant squeegee like <laughs> 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 Jesus, I need a new squeegee. <laughs> Can break out the purple stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if this is next to a planet. Yes, it is. Man, it's great when you can't tell where the fuck shit is. Okay, there's the station. I see it now. Yeah, uh, I guess we'll uh, leave it here. Yeah. Um, Probably in this yeah. caustic nightmare of a podcast. Yeah. Ca- I don't know. Oh All man, right. what a great what a great wrap up. See you everybody. See you later everybody. Let's hope we land safe. We'll see you next time. <laughs>